Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, good morning. Morning. Let's see. Um, Chris DeBoer is, is not here today. He's uh, attending a funeral. And our condolences to him and also our condolences to Brenda Averett, um, who was an active board member for the past several years who lost her mother. So um, our best wishes to them. And so let's call the meeting to order. And let's see, do we have quorum? Yes. Okay. Um, does anyone have any additions or corrections to the December meeting minutes? No. Okay. Um, let's see, do we need to actually officially approve those then? Okay. Okay. Um, Catherine, would you like to give the election committee? Uh, update. Okay. Um, so we, we formed a, um, a review for the election committee and we, um, a, a subcommittee and of two members were not on the collect election committee and um, they were um, reviewed all the documentation. They reviewed the um, complaints um, that were brought forward, and and they found that um, we did everything according to our bylaws, so that the um, activities went on as you know in transparency and um, inaccuracy. So everything that we um, knew that there were some things that weren't necessarily best practice, right? Using um, email wasn't best practice, but it was past practice for all of Mahaka's election had been done that way. Um, and because of our urgency, we used it in order to assure that there was only one vote per one person and that everyone would have access to it. So that was kind of the biggest concern about anonymity. Um, and then again, as we've said over and over again, the only people, uh, individuals who had access to even look at the emails was myself. And um, then we have an admin person who only looked to see if there was something to be replied. But other than that, no one has laid eyes. Uh, and the election committee itself, when we looked at the votes, all of, we looked, the three of us looked at it, but we looked at it all at the same time. And all of that is recorded. Um, and so basically um, we're finalizing the report and all concerns that have been raised have been addressed. And there from the review committee, there was no nothing found to um, raise concern. Catherine, will that report be going out to members? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Does anybody have any questions about that for Catherine? Okay. Thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you for all your work on that. Absolutely, thank you. Lori Rao, would you like to talk about bridging? Well, at this point, we're, we're still kind of pulling together ideas about the newsletter. Catherine and I haven't had a chance to meet you know, due to the holidays and the busyness and whatnot's going on to see where we want to go with that. One of the um, things that I'd like to put uh, a bug in the boards here is we really could use, um, before I start going out to uh, colleges and programs and sort of explaining the benefits of Mahaka, I could really use a, a brochure of some kind about Mahaka, about the history, something that I can physically give to students um, and, and explaining to uh, what Mahaka is, maybe a little bit of history as well. Um, the other thing I wanna make sure, I, I believe it was sort of a policy uh, with the student membership fees, but I just wanna make sure that it still is that they have a special student membership rate 
while they are in school and for one year post-graduation. Um, I didn't know if that is still okay. Is it, you know, something that we can continue to promote to get more students on board? Um, that kind of thing. Lori, um, that is still in place. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just wanted to get real clear on that and make sure that it's written somewhere that the board has approved that that rate can still be while they're in school and for one year post-graduation. Mm -hmm. Yes. It says the bridging is designed for um, students and new mm -hmm. professionals. Mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. and new professionals so we're bridging knowing that that one year that we're still trying to get our sea legs as professionals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um for, yeah. for one year after graduation they still have access to that yeah the other Just, um question i had is we did put out a monthly newsletter but it was put basically on the website and danielle was the one who really put that together and we do have sort of a template in place for all 12 months just going in and redoing it. However, I don't know what the status is on the website, how we could even go about, you know, putting together or revamping a January newsletter or anything really like that. So Lori, actually, um, the main communication was an email. So mainly- Oh, an email. Okay. Mainly. Okay. And we would, we would put it on the website just as oh. to have people to have access okay. to but the uh, students actually um, get it, new professionals get it directly in their email. I see. Okay. I, I guess that's not something I clicked back in my brain there. So no yeah, that's yeah. great. That's great. Okay. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to get together and get it out before January is out. Yeah. 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 That would be great. Okay. And I think in terms of the bridging committee, that's all I have. You know, just getting some clarification points and let you know that, yeah, we're still kind of working out some of the details on getting a January newsletter out. And it'll go out by email. That's news. <laughs> so, so that's all good. I think that's it on the bridging committee. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Lori. Um, I know you and I talked for a minute yesterday about um, you opting into Medicare and you said something that I hadn't heard about and I just wondered if you wanted to yeah, talk about Yeah, and that I was just, just talking to Before Catherine we move to about Medicare, that. I do have a quick question. Oh, about, I'm sorry, Joy. I'm no sorry. Problem. Go ahead. No problem. About the um, Bridging Initiative, just the a clarification of the membership um, pricing for that. Are we, um, so we're clarifying what student means or may maybe defining what student means. Um, I know I've had a couple of contacts or calls um, where um, I know we're talking master's level students and I don't know if that's um, written somewhere or um, just kind of in the clarification and possibly in the January newsletter may be a great place to put it. Um, Cause I think I had a couple of um, mm -hmm. doctorate level students who wanted to do the student um, pricing and those kinds of things, and so we, I don't, you know, I don't know if we want to clarify that it is for mm -hmm. new, um, new students or master's level students or whatever the case may be. And I know it's um, focused on new professionals, but possibly um, uh, as we talk for January, just highlighting um, the new professional part. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. And, and that's it. That's all I got for that. Okay. That that is a really good question. Um, I. What has it been in the past, Catherine? Do we know what we defined as student? Um, I think in the past, and I know she's going to be on, popping on in just a second. Um, okay, I think that's in okay. the past, it has been, uh, because it's student and new professional, so the master's level students into the one year after. Uh -huh. um, but I know online, I, well, I know when you register, mm -hmm. They're like the the membership thing just says student. So if I'm a doctor right, or a student, right. then you know I I could choose it. We mm -hmm. don't necessarily have a way to. Um, okay, what what's the feeling on that overall? Larry had his hand. Yeah, Larry, I just have I just have a suggestion. How about unlicensed? They have to be an, a student and unlicensed, because if they're a doctoral person, they already have their license, and oh, they're yeah. already a professional. Um, you know, but if they're a doctoral student and they're unlicensed, then they're not 
the professional yet. So maybe maybe the license, you know, because if I'm going back for my doctor and offering my license, I'm already a professional and I have been for a while. I'm just going back for my doctorate degree, um, you know, but that's just a thought. I think you'd have to say limited licensed because they're or, or first year out of Yeah, limited yeah. licensed or less, maybe limited licensed or unlicensed, then, then okay. they would be, you know, because you can only be limited licensed now for how many years? Five or ten. something like that? Ten. ten. Oh, it's ten. Oh, wow. So a yeah, person so. could be limited licensed, but you know, that isn't necessarily awful either. It's just another person. Mm -hmm. you know. You know, there's mm -hmm. not a problem with that. Yeah, we'll work through that on the back end. I think, but I do yeah. like the, the idea of, of like a lights, you know, just kind of putting some mm -hmm. defining language in there. Licensed mm -hmm. I, I think that sounds really good is, too. But... I hadn't really thought about doctoral level people wanting a student membership, but if we define it by a license. So, and I know the bridging initiative is well defined by what its mission is, right? It's a mission right. is for new prof students and new professionals. Mm -hmm. And that's just talking more about on the membership side, on that piece of like, per you know, when they mm -hmm. do their uh, membership. Um, and, and there's really no way to, and so the, the biggest thing I would say would be um, for us, uh, and that would be for me on the back end as the membership chair, just making sure that I, that there's a note there, like this is intended for. And then, you know, you can make a choice. You know, this is a student rate intended for. And then just kind mm -hmm. of, right. but it, it is outlined well what the bridge initiative is for, for students, mm -hmm. graduates, and, you know, new professionals. I'm clear about that. I just needed to kind of put that out there for mm -hmm. um, membership levels, but that's it. Okay. okay. I think that's great. All right. Okay. Okay. You want to say a quick thing about Medicare, Lori? Um, just uh, it, from what has happened this week in terms of um, my own experience with Medicare, uh, it was supposed to go in place January 1. Of course, people could opt in and then you got an acceptance letter. You know, I, I did all of mine through a billing, my billing company. They did a lot of that credentialing for me. Um, and I had put on, pulled a couple of people in December who had Medicare, but it was an Advantage plan Medicare. And I had not made the distinction in my mind, why would I, of um, Medicare's Medicare, right? Well, according to the billing company, uh, Medicare A and B is what is being approved for right now if you've opted in for that. Um, but the Advantage plans each have to come up with their own credentialing slash application process. And according to my billing company person, none of them have. So um, <clears throat> they've only had a year, you know. So uh, that's something to keep in mind uh, especially since Medicare was a big win for us to be able to, you know, serve people with Medicare. And yet the Advantage programs, the Blue Cross, Priority, McLaren, Medicare, all, does McLaren have a Medicare? Anyway, any of those Advantage plans, according to my biller, none of them have that application process. And so therefore, we can't bill for any of the advantage plans larry well just real quickly i'm on medicare and i'm mm -hmm. on a medicare advantage mm -hmm. and i have always had on medicare advantage mental health mm -hmm. under priority mm -hmm. in my plan so it was, yeah. it was sort of like even though it was under medicare rates and rules it wasn't approved by medicare it was approved by priority health as a regular mental health benefit mm -hmm. yeah it's specific to allowing lpcs um mm -hmm. okay. uh, it, you know, you can get you can get mental health services, uh, social workers, PhDs, things like that on the Advantage plans. There is just not a way um, on on the back end of that. They have not put together how do LPCs hmm. be able to charge for those plans. They need the paperwork. Yeah. Kristen. Oh yes, yeah. thank you. Um, I was just going to say I, I haven't I haven't opted in or done my application yet, but 
I know that I do my own credentialing for our group and for myself. And I know that I, when I applied for Blue Cross and I think actually most of them, um, they've put me in with their, they've already listed that I'm in network with their, for years with like Blue Cross's uh, mm -hmm. Medicare Advantage plan and United. So we've been getting referrals and I've heard from others, um, other group owners I've talked to that have successfully billed LPCs even prior to this. And there was always the risk of, you know, well, could there be a clawback? And so it was something I never was interested in trying. Um, but I say that just to say that some that I think they 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 didn't have a distinction between license types. So if you applied before to be a network and they accepted and credentialed LPCs, they often would if you chose that as an option, they would put you in with Medicare Advantage plan, even though we could not on the federal mm -hmm. level build Medicare. So I do think that some were getting through, and I think that poss possibly with that in mind some might still be able to get through, but mm -hmm. I think moving forward, um, they might change that like you're talking about to make it more specific. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting because I know once these plans do credential, whether they did it by mistake or not, um, they pretty much follow through anyway, you know? So yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Larry. Mm -hmm. um, okay, implicit bias and human trafficking. Um, the training we we have we are working on getting some trainings together. Um, we I don't have a lot of details for you just yet. Um, does anyone want to say anything about those? We're um, actually gonna we're working on figuring out how to make the human trafficking one an on demand program. Um, so I think that will be excellent. Um, all right. Say, yes, I'll, please. I'll just say, um, I've spoken with um, Jeremy, and he said he's he's interested in it being uh, on demand. Uh, so he 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 would he's open to the idea of making the human trafficking an on-demand program where he doesn't have to do it live all mm -hmm. the time. So he he's open to talking about that. So, yeah. so that, that that was a positive thing. Yeah, that is great because he's he's been a wonderful presenter for us. Um, thank you, Larry. Uh, let's see, discussion of counseling compact. Um, so. Our survey, we sent out a survey to all our members and um, what it came back saying is that, and Larry, correct me if I'm wrong, I wanna say about a third of the people um, were interested and a third were, well, can you tell me? I'd have to go back and look at the exact numbers. I'm doing it from memory too. Um, I believe that, um, it, you know, the, the majority of people wanted to explore it, um, yes. just over half, I think. And the, 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 the largest percentage of the remainder of that, you know, that other sort of half, um, so they didn't know enough about it. Uh, so, so there's a lot of, a lot of ignorance, uh, you know, out there that people just don't know what it is and what are the details of that. Uh, so that, that's, that's a big part of it. It's almost, we need to get more information and more information out to all the members and not only the members, but I would think all the LPCs. I think, you know, I, I think the members are probably, and maybe members might even be more knowledgeable because people are active in an organization. They tend to be the more knowledgeable people. And if you have half of the more knowledgeable people who don't know anything, I would guess that of LPCs around the state, there's even more confusion and, you know, lack of information. So it would seem like something needs to be put together, not just for Mahaka leadership, but something that could get information out to LPCs in general around the state. So there's a lot of, yeah. a lot of ignorance. There, there's interest uh, in finding out what it is and a lot of confusion about what it is. So I'm not sure people are very committed one way or the other, just because they don't know. Can I just so, Yeah, go ahead, Kristen. I was just going to say, I pulled it up. Um, and Larry, your memory is correct, I think, uh, for the most part. 65% said that they would like us to explore participation. 32% were unsure, and a very small percent were whatever the difference is there. Not doing math today. Um, 
if we should sign the counseling compact, that's where there was more of the confusion, yeah. which yeah. I think, you know, understandably so, because there's, we don't have all the info, but um, about 45% were unsure, unsure, don't know enough. And 50% said, yes. So it's about 50% yeah. that, that do want to proceed. Yeah. Thank you. So we are currently working on a, a survey that we do want to send out to all the LPCs. Um, because obviously it's going to affect us all. Um, and like you said, um, hopefully we can access some expertise of our colleagues out there um, because we envision um, putting together a committee that can study the pros and cons of the compact and, um, and then and go from there. Kristen? Yeah. It, um... I was thinking as you were talking, Christy mentioned a long time ago when she was still with us about the school kind of level um, in terms of like there's, and I think Robin talked about this too, that there was a lot of support on the like college collegiate level for the compact. And so, you know, it's not, I, I guess I'm just wondering, has anyone heard of any other organization or group that is moving towards uh, proposing legislation because of course it's not just up to Mahaka you know or any one organization in the state and I'm thinking in particular I know when we talked about it as a group um, I think Jim and Sue some people had met with some of the folks from uh, Wisconsin's chapter um, and they were not in support so there was like they were finding some similarities of why they weren't in support yet the state of Wisconsin is in support. I mean, and they have active, it might be passed now. Last time I looked, there was legislation in process. So I say that just saying, you know, I guess our, our stance is important, but if there's already also a group that's actively working on some of this, um, that would be great to try to collaborate too. So I didn't know if anyone has heard of anything more formalized. That is a really, really good point. And we could put that in our um, in our survey ask if anyone is working on it and we would definitely like to collaborate. Good point, Kristen, thank you. Anybody else on that? Okay. Um, so the next thing is, uh, Kristen, financial report? Yes, let me just pull it up. It's pretty, I sent it out um, it's pretty limited this month. If you, if anyone has looked at it, we had uh, $1,411.67 in membership uh, revenue and our expenses um, really this month were only that I, that I have record of uh, were some, we ordered checks through a bank account and um, some we had a few returned check fees at the Comerica Bank. So um, I did note those there. Um, there are a couple payments as you can see ahead to January. So our January revenue is looking to be um, higher than last month's. Um, we are in process of paying our admin assistant. So you'll see there was no payment in December, but there will be payment for two months in January. Um, we also were able to pay for NEON, um, and again, there was no payment in December and the trans some of the transitions. So uh, a payment has been made this week uh, for, so we're caught up and we're current there so that you'll see a, a double payment show up in January's uh, budget. Um, bank account balances are, are on the bottom consistent with that increase in 1400 or whatever the total revenue is there. Um, this month, You'll see we're operating at 12% expense revenue. So before we were operating uh, over 200% for most of the months. So uh, that's, you know, we're moving in the right direction, I guess. Um, one more thing to note is just the uh, budget. I know that that's not on our agenda today. And I know we haven't really specifically talked about that. I presented just kind of really bare bones estimates last uh, month. And I know we haven't formally voted on that. So I don't know. If people have thoughts of how we should proceed there or if we just, um, I don't know, that's it. Um, that's a good question. 
I think, um, I don't know the answer. I think we'll have to talk about that more. Um, we can talk about that with Chris also. Yes. Thank you. Yes, that makes sense. I think, you know, in terms of strategic planning, just really quick too, I think that was something, you know, we didn't really talk about with training. So, so I think that will change the budget a bit too, uh, what, where we go with that also based on some of the survey results. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Kristen. Um, also just a quick note um, about the counseling compact, we would definitely be working with our lobbyist as far as that. Um, so just to let people know. Uh, old business. Um, last month, I had stated that we would be sending out the bylaws to mem the new bylaws that we've been working on. Um, Krista Bower and I have been meeting with our attorney and um, working on the bylaws. Um, we've come a long way, but uh, we were thinking they were going to be done, but then the holidays got in the way. So um, we have another meeting next week. And um, if they're as far along as we want them to be, we'll send them out to members. Um, and certainly uh, the rest of the board has them as well. Um, so we are working on the bylaws and we will get them to you as soon as possible, members. And um, to comment on before we vote on them, please note that. Uh, and then um, we also have a um, thorough conflict of interest policy that is just about complete as well. So board members will be signing that. Um, and does anybody have anything else? Okay. Um, I do want to mention, just to make sure people know, uh, the Board of Counseling meetings now are on Zoom, so anybody can go. Um, you can you can sign up to receive the Board of Counseling emails, and when they send the agenda, it the Zoom link is in the agenda. So there happens to be a Board of Counseling meeting at, at 10 o'clock today, so. Um, Okay, I think that's it, unless anybody has anything else. And thank you to our guests for attending as well. Happy New Year to y'all. Okay, good to see everybody and we'll see you the third Friday of next month. Do you need a motion to adjourn, Carol? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, I motion to adjourn. I second that motion. Adjourn. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>